Hey guys, what's up? It's Malko Zonky and welcome to my melee guide. Before we get started on the training, I just want to remind you guys that this is a fairly long video, as you can tell. So what I'm going to have is down in the description, I will have the times uh, that you can skip to for the low level training, the medium level training, the high level training. The low level training is right when you're probably about uh, rune weapons or so, even below. Um, and pretty low defense, low stats. The medium level training is right around 75 attack when you get your god sword and uh, get slightly better defensive armor. And the high level training is going to be um, Drygor level or you know higher attack levels with Chaotix. So if you don't want to watch the entire thing, you are perfectly welcome to. But if you'd rather not watch the entire thing, um, just look in the description before you can skip to. That's about it. I'm going to start off with uh, telling you what weapons to use when you first start combat training and enjoy the guide. So for the weapons that you're going to be using for combat training, from level 1 to 75 attack, you just want to go with the best dual wield weapon that you can wear. This depends on your attack level. Obviously, if you're a low level, like level 1, you want to start off with bronze, then move up through iron, steel, mithril, adamant, and rune weaponry. Eventually, you reach dragon at level 75, at level 60. Once you reach level 75, buy yourself a god sword. The bandos god sword is the cheapest. It's usually around 1 mil in the GE, although prices do change. Once you get 80 attack, you want to grind away at that Dungeoneering and get yourself a pair of Chaotics. I would recommend the Chaotic Claws as they are the cheapest dual wield Chaotic and you do want to be using dual wield. And then once you reach 90 attack, you get the Drygor weapons. These are pretty expensive, however, they're going to speed up your training so much that they are very worth it. When you first do start out with the actual training of the attack, once you got your weapons and gear all sorted out, I would recommend to start out with slaying. If you don't want to start out with your attack, strength, defense, and everything all at one, if you are at that stage in the game, you can complete the quest, the waterfall quest. You don't need any previous quests done to complete it. It is a bit difficult to do if you only have one defense. Um, however, it is manageable. There are guides for this quest on the internet. I have not made one myself as I have already done the waterfall quest on uh, the two accounts and I have no plans of doing it again. However, if you Google a guide, I'm sure there are plenty out there. And then as soon as you do get that quest, you'll reach from all the way from level 1 to 30 attack and strength. It will not train your defense. However, once you have 30 attack and strength, it will be much faster to train your defense. And also, uh, I do have a link to a Slayer guide in the description that I have made if you need some basic info on how to start slaying. But you want to get to the closest, the highest level Slayer Master that you can use for your level and just kill whatever they assign for you as a task. Um, for starting out Slayer, I would recommend if you're very low combat level to use the Slayer Master in the Taverly starting area. He'll give you a nice manageable task that you can kill even with very low stats and that will train your combat skills quite fast. Once you've got past the initial stages and are beginning to get your first few levels in your combat stats, here are some monsters you can train on if you are getting tired of Slayer or just don't want to go down that route. Um, and you've gotten some decent weapons and gear from quests and random miscellaneous things that you've killed. Um, these are some of the lower level monsters that you can kill without having to be really high level to kill them. Uh, first of all is the Ankus. I'm going to be showing you where all these monsters are and how to get to them after I go over them. Um, Ankus are located in the Barbarian Village dungeon. Um, you can kill them very fast because they have very low hit points. Um, and there's a, play a room that you can kill them that has quite a few spawns. The next is the Ogres. Uh, they are not weak to melee attacks, but you can still hit them fairly well with melee, and they give a lot of experience per kill at a low level. Um, if you have 50 Slayer, you can kill Jellies, which are weak to melee attacks, um, and they're also very good combat XP per hour, even faster than Ankus and Ogres. And finally, if you have done the Smoking Kills quest, which is required for the Slayer Helm, um, you can access the dungeon within that quest and kill Mighty Banshees. Again, they are not weak to melee, but they have a very low defense, so you can hit them even with melee weapons. Uh, and they clock in at about 234,000 combat experience per hour. Um, all of these are tested with lower level weapons. I used a god sword to test all four of these monsters. Um, so even at if you don't have super high attack levels, you can manage these experience rates. So this is the part of the video where I show you where everything is, how to get there, how to kill them, etc, etc. First of all, we're starting off with Ankus, and the starting point to get to these is the Edgeville Lodestone, and you just run straight south to the Barbarian Village. It's not that far to run, so don't complain or anything. And then once you go there, if you haven't been through all the doors yet, you'll have to go through all the doors. However, if you're a higher combat level, you can just go straight through the portals. Um, the doors are pretty straightforward. Uh, you just have to go through a few doors and then into a treasure room and then go down through a portal. 
Um, if you cannot figure it out, just look up. I, the RuneScape wiki has a map that you can look at that's very easy to follow. Um, but anyway, you just want to go into this far northeastern room, and there's a whole bunch of Ankus there, and there's no other monsters. All the other monsters in the dungeon um, will not be in this Anku room, so you can just focus on the Ankus. You want to get a fairly high spawn world for those. Um, anyway, for the Ogres, you want to go to the Yanel portal and run directly to the west, and they're just right there, right there smack in the middle of between castle wars and yenil so uh you can also just teleport to castle wars but the yenil lodestone is a bit easier you don't have to waste a dueling ring or anything um and there's the ogres so they're probably the easiest monster in this entire guide to get through uh get to and then the next one is the jellies how you get to these is you just go to the relica slayer caves um which is just to the south east of the town of relica or to the northeast of the town of camelot and there's a whole bunch of monsters in this dungeon but we're not focusing on them we're just focusing on the jellies um which will be if you don't have the agility shortcut to go through that for, first shortcut that i showed just run through the dungeon um there's only one way you can go so no chance of getting lost or anything and just kill the jellies again 50 slayer required for those guys uh, and then the final monster here is going to be the Mighty Banshees. Again, you do have to complete the quest Smoking Kills, so just be aware of that. If you haven't done the quest, you can't kill them. You also need either a Slayer Helm or Mast Earmuffs, otherwise the dungeon uh, down here will damage your health if you don't have one of those two equipped. And then, yeah, just smack away at the Mighty Banshees. For your medium level combat train, I'd recommend starting on these monsters once you get around 75 attack and about 70 defense and you got your Barrow's Armor and your God Sword or even your Chaotic Weapons. Um, first of all is Dust Devils. These require 65 Slayer to kill, um, so you do have to grind a bit of Slayer away, but they are very good, very rewarding experience. They also drop a lot of Crimson Charms, so they are good for training summoning as well. Um, 217,000 experience now are there. Killing monsters in the living rock caverns. These have no requirements to get to or to kill, so they are a good monster to camp um, if you don't feel like doing any quests or training your slayer. Um, with the god sword, I managed 268,000 experience per hour there. Um, I fire giants. These do a lot of damage if you don't have a very high defense level, so I'd recommend to have at least Barrow's armor before you start killing these. But again, they can be quite fast at 271,000 an hour. And finally, Hellhounds. Uh, these are also aggressive to you. However, if you don't pay attention, you're not going to be getting that fast experience per hour. But if you do pay attention and you really try hard at the Hellhounds, you can get up to 350,000 experience per hour, even with just a God Sword and without really high stats. So they can be a really high, a really good uh, method to go with if you just want to train your stats fast and not have to worry about um, moving around from different places or doing Slayer. For our next set of monsters here, there's going to be a couple that are in the Chaos Tunnels, so if you are allergic to the wilderness, you might want to avoid a couple of these, but it's not too bad. I've done a million Dust Devil and Fire Giant tasks, and I've never been attacked in the wilderness or anything. So Jagex decided to kind of um, be trolls, and of course, while I was recording, they gave me a Chaos Portal, so it's just that portal that I just clicked on there. That's the one that you want to go through to the Dust Devils. But they teleported me away to a random portal, which does happen. But anyway, that's easily remedied. Um, chaos tunnels aren't too big. If they are confusing to you, yeah, just follow the route that I I went myself exactly, and you'll reach the Dust Devils. Um, just make sure you're wearing a Slayer helmet or a face mask while killing these, because otherwise they will drain your stats and will make your life rather miserable. So the next one is Living Rock Creatures, and I'm running from the Falador Lodestone because that's the closest um, easy point to get to, point of reference to render the Living Rock Caverns. This is the route I always take, um, so it's not too far away. And the Living Rock Caverns are just great uh, to kill monsters in because the monsters do have a fair amount of health, so you don't have to run around too much, and pretty good XP per kill as well. I actually really like these. Um, for some reason, I have them blocked in my slayer list. They're quite fun monsters to kill. Maybe I should unblock them, but yeah, that is how you get to and how you kill the Living Rock creatures. The next one is Fire Giants. There's a couple different locations you can kill these. This is just by far the easiest one to get to, so this is why I'm showing you this one. If you have done the Waterfall quest, like I said earlier in the guide that you should do, you can kill the Fire Giants in the Waterfall dungeon as well. Uh, it's just a bit faster and a bit simpler to get to this location, so that's why I'm showing this one. Um, and unfortunately, the Fire Giants, they used to be aggressive. They are no longer aggressive, so you do have to click on them. Almost no monsters in the game are aggressive anymore, but that's just a small annoyance. I'm sure you guys will manage to kill them if that's what you really want to train on. And the fire final monster I'm going to be showing in this segment is the Hellhounds. 
best place to kill these is in Taverly Dungeon. If you don't have 80 agility, you can't go through this shortcut here. If you have 70 agility, you can use the pipe that was uh, just to the east of where I ran in. If you don't have 70 agility, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to run all the way through the dungeon, uh, which is a huge pain, but it only takes a couple minutes, and it's just a couple minutes in your entire life, so I'm sure that won't be too much of a problem. But yeah, there were a lot of people here for some reason, but this is where the Hellhounds are, and this is how you kill them. Now we move on to the high level combat training. All of these I tested the experience rates with Drygores, so if you do not have Drygores, if you're just using chaotic weapons, they are going to be a bit slower than what I, you see here. And also, three of these four monsters do require pretty high Slayer levels. So although I'd recommend doing Slayer anyway to get your combat training, um, if you have trained your Slayer for quite a while and you just want to take a break and camp one of the Slayer monsters for some good combat experience, here are a few options for you. First of all are the mutated Jadinko males. Um, 91 Slayer required for these, so that's quite a high requirement. But at the same time, they're 371,000 combat experience per hour, so that's not bad. The Abyssal Demons, um, at 85 Slayer required to kill them, but still 380,000 melee experience per hour, also very good. The Water Fiends are absolutely amazing experience per hour. Again, they are not weak to melee, but if you have Drygore weapons, you're going to be hitting them almost every time anyway because they're so accurate. Even with Chaotic Weapons, you can still hit them fairly accurately, although you're not going to be getting that much experience um, as high as 477,000 an hour. And finally, the Dark Beast at nearly 500,000 XP per hour. Absolutely amazing XP killing these. And obviously, if you use a cannon um, at the Dark Beast, it's going to be a little bit faster. And here is the final segment of monsters, the higher leveled buggers that you can fight in this guide if you choose to follow it for your combat training. So the first one here is in the Herblore Habitat. If you do not have the Witch Doctor Mask to teleport here, you can buy a Juju Teleport Spirit Bag off the GE and just click on it and it will teleport you to the exact same spot where it teleported me. And then yeah, you just go through the ha habitat and go down that little place um, and go in here where the Judinko males are. If you haven't been in the habitat itself and you did not cut the vines, which are in the end of the tunnel where I popped in, you will not be able to use that shortcut, so just keep that in mind. You do have to unblock it before you can use that shortcut, just so no one gets confused. Uh, secondly, I did have the Helm of Warping, um, which you got off the School of Fortune a few months ago, and that will teleport you straight to the Abbey Demons. If you don't have that, just use a Slayer Ring or whatever to teleport to the Mauritania Slayer Tower and go to the top floor. Uh, and this is where I kill them. It, of course, if you have them as a Slayer task, you can kill them in Curridale's Dungeon, which is also another good option. Um, but if you are killing he them here, just remember to get a Slayer contract from the guy at the start of the tower. And the next monster here is the Water Fiends. Um, if you have unlocked the Fairy Ring in the Ancient Cavern, you can teleport to it using the code that I showed on screen. Um, if you have not unlocked the Fairy Ring, just go down here with five Bitter Cat Mushrooms in your inventory and click on the Fairy Ring and you will repair it and it's very very useful for getting to Curadel and getting to Water Fiends. And the final one here is the Dark Beast. If you don't have the um if you have not completed the quest within the light, you won't have one of those little crystal things that I have that can teleport you here. Um but if you've done the Mornings and Part 2 quest, just follow whatever route you used in that quest to get to the Dark Beast. This is a kind of annoying place to get to if you don't have that crystal, if you haven't completed the Within the Light quest, so I'd recommend doing it, or otherwise just killing them in the Curadel's Dungeon while you have them as tasks. But either way, very good XP here. And finally, to end off this video, I figured I'd throw in a couple methods to train that aren't quite as good XP per hour as some of the previous methods. However, you can make quite a bit of money as well. First of all is killing Bandos in the God Wars dungeon. Um, he is the best experience per hour of all the God Wars dungeon bosses, and he's 350k XP per hour using Drygores there. And you can also make around 2.5 mil or more profit an hour. This does depend on luck, so that's why I didn't include a base money per hour, because it just depends on how many drops you get from him. Also, the Frost Dragons, if you have 85 Dungeoneering, um, you can get up to 325,000 melee experience per hour, so they're very good XP. Um, and also 3 mil plus per hour. This can go up to 4 mil or more. It just depends on how, many, how much the Frost Dragon bones are at the moment, because the prices do change quite often. However, uh, they are kind of annoying to kill, but once you get the hang of it, you can get very good XP and very good money per hour here as well. So that's going to do it for my combat training guide. I'm not going to show you guys how to kill frost dragons or how to kill bandos um, because this video is already way too long. 
But if you want to know how to kill frost dragons, I will have a frost dragons guide down in the description, and I will be making a bandos guide as well. If you are watching this video and I have not yet uploaded a bandos guide, remind me in the comments to upload a bandos guide because I actually want to do um, all four God Wars dungeon guides. I've only done two so far, so remind me to do that, and I will get on it eventually. Anyway, thank you for watching. Hopefully, I helped and join my friends chat in game. Farewell.